Let's go live to Dundee and speak to the deputy leader of the Scottish National Party, Stuart Hosey. Thanks for joining us. So Trident is a red line for your party. Um, why would you want to leave future generations without a nuclear deterrent when we've no idea what future security risks there could be? Uh, well, we've never used Trident. Uh, we didn't use Polaris before that. Uh, we've no intention of using Trident uh, or its successor. Uh, these are indiscriminate weapons of mass destruction and are wrong in, in principle. And the UK doesn't have £100 billion to waste on them. Uh, I also think it's the case when you look at Labour candidates, uh, many people in public life, they question the morality uh, of Trident, the cost of Trident and its replacement. I think there's a moving towards a majority not to spend a hundred billion we don't have on these weapons of mass destruction and as for leaving the UK undefended quite the reverse the waste of money on Trident and its replacement it could be used much more sensibly to deploy conventional weapons in a way we do not simply have at the moment but we don't know what future security threats there could be do you d deny that there is any deterrent effect from having tried. I mean, you say the fact we've never used it means we don't need it. Well, I, I think if my history is correct, there's barely been one or two years since the end of the Second War when the UK hasn't been involved in a conflict somewhere on the face of the planet. These conflicts were not stopped because we had Trident, uh, quite the reverse. I mean, having nuclear weapons didn't stop Argentina invading the Falklands, for example. I think what we need to understand is where are we sending our troops and what is our security risk? And it tends to be asymmetric conflicts, not state against state. This is a relic of the Cold War. We've no long-range maritime patrol aircraft because the UK chopped up the Nimrods. We've aircraft carriers with no vertical lift aircraft because they sold the Harriers to the United States. This is just daft stuff. We don't even have an ocean-going surface vessel based in Scotland, so when the Admiral Kuznetsov arrives and bursts off the west coast, it takes more than a day to send a single ship from the south of England. We could defend ourselves much, much better if we didn't have Trident. On, on the issue of whether Trident would feature in any potential deal between the SNP and Labour or any other party, I know the SNP have said that they don't want to do a deal with Labour, but would, would Trident be something on the table as an absolute red line in those negotiations? I mean, Nicola Sturgeon yes, has said I mean, she would was... support Ed Miliband as Prime Minister. Would she absolutely refuse to support him if he didn't change his stance on Trident? Oh, she would definitely support him uh, as Prime Minister because we want to lock the Tories out of power. Now, if there was a confidence and supply arrangement for five years, then we'd have to agree on many things, but one of those would have to be our opposition to Trident. If, on the other hand, it was a vote-by-vote -vote basis, that's what perhaps a minority Labour administration wanted, then there would be no agreement and we would most certainly vote against uh, renewing Trident. The UK simply doesn't have £100 billion to do that. So confidence and supply... Uh, would only happen in the event of Labour agreeing with the SNP on Trident? Well, absolutely. And, you know, when you look at the survey of Labour candidates, I think it was 75% shared our view that Trident shouldn't be replaced. Certainly the polling in Scotland shows the majority of politicians and the public are opposed to Trident and its replacement. It may well be that once we get past the election, there'll actually be a majority not to renew Trident, not to waste that money, to have proper conventional defence and to put ourselves on a far, far better economic footing. Stuart Hosey, thank you very much for joining us.